Yeah, thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. I'm Kohei Nakaji from the University of Toronto. Uh, today, I will talk with the title, The Generative Quantum Eigen Solver and its Application for Grand State Search. Uh, this is a collaborative work with the NVIDIA quantum team. So quantum computer has been developed rapidly. Uh, this is a beautiful image of quantum computer uh, generated by gener generative AI. Well, so generative AI is also improving. Actually, this slide represents what I want to talk about today. So quantum computer has been developed rapidly and generative AI is also improving rapidly. Then why don't we combine those two? Generative AI for quantum. This is the main topic of today's talk. Uh, as a conventional near-term quantum algorithms, in this decade, variational quantum algorithm, VQA, has been actively studied. The input of variational quantum algorithm is the structure of the parameterized quantum circuit and the definition of the cost function. And as a result of the optimization, we get optimal theta parameters as an output and we uh, get the minimum value of the cost function in the ideal case. And there are many variants of VQA, like for Grand State Search, for machine learning, for time evolution, and so on. And it is, you know, it has been actively studied in this decade. However, there are scalability issues in VQA. What we expect in the optimization of VQA is that optimization directly goes to the, ground, uh, to the global minima. But in reality, there are scalability issues like barren plateau problem or mini local minima, mini measurements. And those scalability issues become severe when we increase the problem size or number of qubits. So we definitely need uh, a near-term algorithm beyond VQA. So as a new concept beyond VQA, we recently come up with a concept called generative quantum eigen solver utilizing the generative model of quantum circuits. In GQE, the neural network generates quantum circuits and we calculate the corresponding uh, cost function and we calculate the feedback to the neural network. And by repeating this process, we train the neural network so that it uh, generate quantum circuits having lower cost value. As a proof of concept, we created an algorithm called GPTQE for ground state search. So the cost function is energy, ground state search and utilizing the pre-trainable transformer implementation. So in the rest of the talk, uh, I will talk about GPTQE in detail. Uh, specifically, I will talk about how neural networks generate quantum circuits and how we calculate the feedback to the neural network. And also because GPTQE also has a function of pre-training. So I will also talk about how we pre-train the neural network. So first, let me talk about how neural networks generate quantum circuits. So as I said before, uh, in our GPTQE, we utilize transformer. And transformer generate a sequence of tokens. In case of the large language model like ChatGPT, each token is mapped to a word by using predefined vocabulary. So the sequence of tokens is mapped to a sequence of words meaning sentence. In case of GPTQE, each token is mapped to a certain circuit component by using predefined operator pool. So the sequence of tokens is mapped to the sequence of circuit components, meaning a quantum circuit. By using this quantum circuit, we can calculate the corresponding energy by using you know, quantum device 
as an expectation value of an observable Hamiltonian. So this is how the transformer generate quantum circuit. And this is an example of a quantum circuit generated by transformer. So these 58, 53 are a uh, sequence of tokens. And those tokens are mapped to circuit components. And in this example, we utilize as an operator, we utilize exponential IPJTJ. So, well, this is the first, as far as we know, this is the first quantum circuit generated by transformer. So this is a process to generate quantum circuits by using transformer. Then how we calculate the feedback to the neural network transformer. To see how we calculate the feedback to the transformer, we need to uh, see how transformer generate each token in detail. The process of generating sequence of tokens uh, is like step-by-step -step process. In the first step, without any input, transformer generate logit, which is a vector. And according to the logit, uh, the first token J1 is sampled with this probability. And in the second step, a J1 is used as an input and uh, the logic is calculated as an output. And according to the logic, the second token is sampled. And by repeating this process, we can get the sequence of tokens. And as I said before, the sequence of tokens is mapped to the sequence of uh, circuit components, a quantum circuit, and we can calculate the corresponding energy uh, by using quantum device. To build the procedure to calculate the feedback to the transformer, we utilize those the following insights. So the probability that the sequence J vector is sample is proportional to exponential minus beta W sum J vector. We can easily check that because the probability that each token is generated is exponential minus beta of j1, exponential minus of j2. So uh, the probability that each sequence of token is generated is the product of those probabilities. So that's why it's exponential minus beta w sub j. Then if this w sub j vector is exactly equals to energy value ej calculated by the quantum device, then the ground state is likely to be generated. From these insights, we create a, a technique called logic matching, which matches the value of W sum calculated by transformer with energy value calculated by quantum device. So this is a whole process of training, uh, the whole training process in GPTQE transformer generate sequence of tokens and also calculate the logic sum. And we, uh, by using quantum device, we calculate the corresponding energy and we calculate the cost by using logic matching technique. And by using back propagation, we can update the parameters inside transformer. By repeating this process, we train transformer so that low energy state is likely to be generated. This uh, is uh, this. These are the results of the grand state search using the electronic structure Hamiltonians by using GPTQE. Uh, uh, as an operator pool, we uh, we choose unitary couple class operators and. As a quantum device, we utilize actually simulator implemented by CUDA quantum provided by NVIDIA quantum team. So the horizontal axis is bond length and the vertical axis is the energy value. And these dotted lines is uh, the, the result of Hartree-Fock calculation. And this uh, black line 
is a result of you know exact calculation and this green line green dots are the results of gpdqe so by this you know a result we see that you know the training of gpdqe uh, properly works at least so this is how you know the training process uh, in gpdqe works so finally, let me talk about the, let me briefly talk about how we pre-train transformer. So in the process of training, we don't need any data sets. But we can see that in the in this training process, we can aggregate the data given by a pair of quantum circuit and corresponding energy. Because we run the quantum device repeatedly. So we can aggregate the data set given by a pair of quantum circuit and the corresponding energy. This created data set is actually usable to train the transformer without running a quantum computer. So this data set can be inputted as uh, used as an input of transformer and we calculate logit sums, and we calculate the cost by using the data set. And we can update the parameters of, back, of, of transformer by using back propagation without quantum device. We call this process as pre-training. So we can pre-train the transformer with the data set and then train the transformer with quantum de device. And actually, I, I don't talk about it in detail because of the limitation of the time, but we actually verified that procedure using pre-training and training uh, improves the quality of the quantum state search. And we also identified the uh, you know, uh, promising scenario utilizing uh, pre-training. So as I talked, uh, in GPTQE, uh, neural network generate quantum circuits, and we calculate the feedback using logic matching cost. And we can also pre-train the neural network by using generated data set. So this is how uh, GQE, generative quantum eigen solver, work. So this is a summary of today's talk. The variational quantum algorithm, QA has been has obtained considerably in the interest as a near-term algorithm in this decade, but is currently hampered by scalability issues. We believe that the solution to the issue lies in AI. We have introduced GQE as a new concept for near-term algorithm and have demonstrated its viability through the GPTQE for grand state search. As a future work, Conducting experiments with large molecules and utilizing actual quantum devices will be, you know, possible future work. And enhancing algorithm and exploring diverse applications like in VQA is also promising, you know, future work. And also, we will make the code open source as early as possible. So, you know, I want you guys to join this hot field. Thank you for listening. All right, Koei, thanks so much. Oh, you got to thank you slide up there. I'll leave that up. Cool. Awesome. That's a big group. Nice. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, there was quite a bit of questions in the chat. Actually, I think one of our mods put in uh, the paper, the archive link for uh, your GPTQE paper. Um, so go check that out as well if you want to have another, uh, ha have a more detailed look at uh, Koei's presentation. We do have some questions from the chat, though. Um, uh, you might need to flick through some of your slides too here, Koei. So, um, but we have a question from Dentucky Kirby asking, uh, the sequence of tokens looks an awful lot like an RBM. Is there anything there or is that just a coincidence? So for those of you who don't know, an RBM is a restricted Boltzmann machine. It's a bit of like, mm -hmm. a, it's an old generative model kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think this slide right here. Okay. The, the J1 so and J2s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the question would be like, uh, it is it resembles the restricted Boltzmann machine. 
Well, I guess like the the weights here, e to the minus beta w, like that's ah uh, okay. Yeah, that that yeah, yeah, yeah. looks like a bolt. Well, it's a Boltzmann distribution. I know we're in the context of machine learning, so restricted Boltzmann machine. Yeah, I don't know. Is it that just a coincidence or anything there? Well, it's not a coincidence actually. You know, restricted Boltzmann machine is actually inspired by the you know physical intuitions, right? Right. And also, uh, you know, something process in transformer is also, you know, uh, inspired by, you know, that physical inspiration. So that's why it's, it's, I think it's not a coincidence. You know, actually, this exponential by the minus beta, th beta W thing is not what we invented, <laughs> which is actually, you know, the, the, the conventional way to utilize transformer as a sampler. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Does cool. it answer the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think I, so. That's yeah. good. And uh, again, any question, any further questions for Koei, uh, feel free to answer them or ask them in the chat still, or uh, you'll be on Discord later too. Okay, we have another question from Latris17. Uh, they say, I have a question. Is the transfer also minimizing the circuit, like the number of gates used? Uh, that's a you know, very good question. You know, uh, So far, we don't you know, minimize uh, the number of tokens, I mean, number of, you know, the depth of the circuit so far, but it's, I think it's possible. Interesting, okay. So it's, a, you know, it, it's a good, you know, it's also a good, good, good direction for the future research, definitely. Right, okay. Um, another question from Quantum Palace, by exact calculation, I think maybe at some point in your presentation, you'd said like there's an exact yeah, calculation happening. Yeah. Um, by exact calculation, do you mean exact diagonalization? There are no analytical yeah. solutions for these kinds of Hamiltonians as far as I know. Yes, uh, exact di diagonalization, that's true. Because yeah, this is a simulation and the size is not so large, so we can, you know, calculate that we can, you know, perform the exact diagonalization. Okay, cool. So that's why. Nice, nice. All right. Uh, another question from Andresu Lead. Um, what type of optimizer is used? One that computes derivatives directly or one that does not rely on derivatives? So, yeah, it relies on derivative definitely because you know we utilize the back propagation, right? And uh, and yeah, so it relies on the derivative, and we utilize the Adam as an optimizer. Right. Okay. Um, uh, one more question from Quantum Palace: Which part is quantum, and which part is classical? So I believe the generating algorithm is one hundred percent classical, and the energy yes. landscape is quantum. That's what they say. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So the, the, yeah, the, yeah. The only place quantum is involved is this energy calculation part. Awesome. Okay. Um, those are some good questions. Again, everybody, uh, people will be, on, or sorry, uh, Kohei will be on the Discord after after the talk here. So um, go on the Discord and ask Kohei some more questions. I see some people maybe trying to follow up with some questions. Uh, great, great chance to go over to the Discord and, and join Kohei there. Um, Kohei, we'll, uh, we'll say goodbye here for now, but uh, thank you so much for, for joining us at QHack. It was lovely to have you. Um, hope you enjoy the, uh, the day today in Toronto. It's a little muggy out, but uh, maybe go get some fresh air after your talk. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care. My pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. <laughs>